doesn't. I mean, yeah. I mean, there were days when I would drag Billy to G Chiquito and he would be screaming at me in the back of the car all the way to the place. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and I'm like, you're going. You're taking this. You wanted to sign up for it. You're going to finish it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, 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 and then he'd go and he'd be fine. And that's and what's important is, is that they're, they're good while they're there. I and said, they're okay I was with stopping it. him playing his games to take him to something that he didn't want to stop his game for. I think it, that was the bottom yeah. line. And every parent out there that's listening to this can absolutely go, oh, yeah, yep, yep. Oh. <laughs> Taking see, them from one environment to another. <laughs> I wasn't even going to sign him back up because six months ago, if you remember, yep. six months ago, I initially brought Hunter to MMA because I thought he would enjoy it. Not yeah. Zoe. Not and Zoe. Oh, well, hey. He tried the <laughs> free class wrong. and um, mm -hmm. he, it wasn't for him at the time. Yeah. And as I was talking with the teacher, Zoe was like, I, I, I want to try. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she tried a class and she absolutely freaking loved it. And yeah. so she's been doing it for the last six months and, and, if you guys are following my Instagram at all, that's like her highlight reel. Yep. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> she's, she's doing really, really well. And so Hunter in the last month or two has started saying, Hey, I want to try it. I want to try it. And I didn't jump the first time he said it. Right. Cause I wanted because to see, is he, is he gonna, you know, come back? Is he gonna, you know, say he wants to do it again. Let's see if this is an ongoing thing or if this is just like, we're doing it once and that's it. Yep. Well, he kept going. And so I finally said, okay, we'll give you another shot. And I talked to the, the owner and they said, yeah, we'll give him another free class to see if he really likes it because his age group, the kids are a lot bigger. Yeah. They're, and they're just a tad bigger. <laughs> holy hell. They're bigger. It's oh like, my God. Feed them? <laughs> it's Hunter's 10 and he's never going to be the tallest kid. Never. Yeah. His mom's yeah. short. His dad's short. It's just, it's not going to happen. It's not the stars kid, but these kids are like giants. Because that 13, something at, at 13 with boys, whew, yep. they shoot up. And and that cutoff, it's like 14 is the next grade or next class yes. up. So you've got little, you know, midget nine and 10 year olds and these giant, <laughs> giant teenager <laughs> But no, he liked the class. He is very much my sweet, sensitive boy. Yep. So he's going to take a little, a little bit to get into it. And, and especially with the way any kind of wrestling or grappling, mm -hmm. You're in weird, funny positions sometimes. And right. Yes. I well, would be giggly and and yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, yeah. when they're like, all right, start and mount, get on top of him. It's like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely wrestling, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, Zoe jumps right on. She's ready to tackle. Hunter's just mm -hmm. like, what? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> <Just> stop it. <laughs> But he's smiling. He's smiling. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. As long as he's smiling, as long as he's happy. All right. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> after that little tangent, welcome everybody to Spilling Ink. We are the talk show that takes you behind the book to meet the authors and professionals in the publishing industry. Welcome back, Jane. We missed Hello. you last week. Yes. I was uh, celebrating my son's 30th birthday party. So it, it was not in the cards to be here. <laughs> But. That's okay. You can always catch up on the uh, the astrology recap from last month, yes. and we'll definitely have to do another check in next month because hopefully next month is better than this one. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> but today, you mm -hmm. actually decided to choose the topic, and it's actually topical with what you're dealing with. So, oh, yeah, tell us what we're doing, Jane. We are going to be talking about releases. You know what you do, what how to plan a proper release day event, <laughs> let's say event or activities or things that you want to do. Um, and we're going to look at it from the free standpoint, the things you can do for free <laughs> <That's me. laughs> without spending lots of money to do it. Um, and, and I've been in, you know, some of this, this uh, challenging workspace, <laughs> let's call it. Um, I decided that for my next release, I'm going to do a Facebook release party and takeovers in my group. Now, I've never done that. I have 
joined others and done takeovers in their groups, but I've never coordinated. <laughs> so I really didn't understand it. And first of all, I had to figure out Google Forms <laughs> to, to sign up for it, to have the sign up stuff. Because so, I'm like, how am I going to do this and, and have it in the, some organized way that I'll be able to follow, the other people will be able to follow. So I looked at, yeah, <clears throat> with the night, yeah, Facebook is a nightmare right now. But <laughs> I was going to say, Facebook seems like it's on the tail end because I don't know about you. I keep seeing the same 10 posts every time I log in and it's, it's like, it's on an instant repeat <clears throat> and Almost, no matter how much yes. I'm scrolling, I'm not seeing any of my friends posts. So I've kind of, I've kind of been I go out for the most part. Well, well, I'm in a lot of groups. I'm in a lot of groups. And, oh, and groups okay. are a little bit easier than friends posts. I'm sensing so, some sarcasm, Anita. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, I got the Google form out. Um, I, I leveraged I <laughs> somebody else's um, for a party that I was in. And I really liked how it was done. And I liked how they did the rules. Hi, Mike. And, and all of that in it. And I thought, okay, I can do something like that. So I did, you know, and I've gotten from 9 a.m. to 7.30. I only have five spots that are still open. Okay. So that, that made me really happy <laughs> that, so that I got so many people who wanted to join and, and take over. Google Forms then falls under the free category. Yep. Things that people yep. can use to, to help organize their, their releases. Yep. And Same this is being done in groups, so you're yep. you're using another free utility. Exactly. It's okay. Now, now I need to get people there. That's, the, ah. that's another key is getting people there. You know, growing that group from you know the small group it was, you know, into something bigger. I've basically doubled it at this point. We should probably um, show everybody what what you're uh, yes. what you're releasing. Yes. This is hard is coming out on April 5th. Gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I love the colors. Yes. The perfect color scheme on that. Yes. Yes. I love that. The reds, the, the greens. It's actually, what is that? Teal? Oh, yeah. That red just draws <laughs> the eye in. Oh, I just love yes. it. I love it. Love it. Yep. All right. So you're you're getting you're getting everything set up. Yep. And and I have to do, you know. What I've seen in other groups that is that I liked is the welcome posts that the ho host of the show does for each of the um, people. Okay. So, you know, I sent you a, a sample <laughs> of that before, you know, just the welcome and then the name with the same theme. It's right next to the... Did I download that one? Hold on. Hold on. Let me oh. find it. <gasps> it didn't download. Hold up. Let me find it. Keep talking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I had to do this for each of the each of the people. I also had to do the schedule so people could see who's coming when, and, and all of this stuff. And you know, I'm not at expert level in GIMP. I only have GIMP. I don't have Photoshop. <laughs> Another free utility. Yes, Chalk one up for the, the free, free side here. Yep, and that's where I do all my promo pictures. Yeah, so that, there it is. Ooh, you know, I took Ooh, I like cover, that. blew it up. <laughs> Oh, I had space so for the the names and and you know so I'm making that for everything. And one of the things I like about groups is you can schedule stuff. <laughs> is you can what? What was that? Schedule the posts. Oh, yes. Okay. So you okay. don't necessarily have to be there, you know, doing it as you're going, which is really nice. Which was really nice today for for one of the ones I was in on the paranormal romance site. Because I was also being interviewed um, <laughs> at the same time <laughs> or overlap. So I'm glad I was able to schedule those beforehand. But it's a way to engage with your fans and readers and other people's fans who've come to see, you know, see their posts and see their giveaways, because that's another thing that you do is giveaways. Either you give away copies of your book, ebooks or paperbacks. Paperbacks cost. <laughs> you know, gift cards mm -hmm. cost, you know, bigger gifts cost, but you can still do some free stuff there, you know, like the ebooks and things like that. Oh, 
I've never used Canva. <clears throat> I keep Somebody hearing that also... one come up a lot. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm not um, sure if that's a free utility or not. So we'll have to check into that one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, money. Oh, okay. look at that. Mm. Cool. So you'll definitely have to check out uh, Go Indie Now so that you can learn Canva. Look at that. Absolutely. I Absolutely. love when it works out like that. Yes. <laughs> and all hosts, hosts can schedule. Hosts can schedule. Um, if, if you're given um, rights to either admin or moderator, you can post as well. So moderators can schedule, so, which, which I wasn't sure of that. But I was a moderator in the group today and I was able to schedule them. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'll, okay. I'll make all my people who are coming mods, not admins, because admin kind of scares me. <laughs> all right. I have a question because Trisha says book funnel for free book delivery. I'm assuming we're talking about ebooks, right? Yes. Is it better than to go through something like that or like, um, I just blanked story out? Origin, oh, story origin. Story origin. Not it's not free anymore, but I find story origin worth the cost because of the the book downloads you can do, the reviews you can do. I like I I use their you know works in progress tracking. <laughs> I okay. love that. It tells me how much I have left to do on all of the ones that I have in there. Um, <clears throat> you know, oh, the work for promo stuff. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I just I wonder if it's if if it's worth it because you can email people the book mm -hmm. files, but then you have to play tech support with them and teach them how to actually use their device because most right. of them don't know how right. to take the file and put it on their device. Right. So if it's worth it and it's a either free or cheap utility, seems like that's mm -hmm. definitely a way to go <clears throat> to reduce a headache. Worth worth the true. cost. True. True. I mean, I I. Book funnel I used. Um, I, I kind of like story origin more, especially for reviews. Um, it used to be free, but it's not anymore. <laughs> um, but for the reviews, you can track what the people, you know, when, when somebody asks for it, you can go into it and look and see how many they've done before. How many, you know, how many mm -hmm. they've requested, how many reviews they've done. Yeah, I and like that feature on that. Story Origin. I, yeah. I really do. Because it's oh, like, you know, if they've got all, if they, if they, you know, ask for 500 books and have zero reviews, you're like, mm, yeah, no. you no. know, this is somebody looking for something for free. Oh, shout out to Mike. <laughs> Welcome back. Haven't seen you in forever. Hello. <laughs> and we said book funnel <clears throat> delivers and can be free. Yes, mm -hmm. that's good. Yep. Story okay. origin. To, yeah, we've actually loved story origin from the beginning before yes. it had a cost to it. Yes. Um, he baited it for so long that we all got used to using it. We all really um, mm -hmm. enjoyed how communicative he was. He was always asking, what's the next best feature to do? What works? What doesn't? What do you want to see? So he really worked with all the indie authors. So, but, you know, you kind of feel like, okay, now that, you know, yes, you are charging a little bit. It's worth it because we still want to support you. Right. And, and. And they're still listening to us, you know, like, mm -hmm. like for the for the reviews. Now we don't have to upload a sample before it was like, oh, I have to do. A sample I know the too. sample always. Yeah, it's like oh, I got on. his reasoning why, because then you yeah. give people the opportunity to actually sample it. But no one really wants to sample. Nobody it. does. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, he he fixed that, which was great. Um, I like the newsletter swaps. Mm -hmm. Those functions are great. Um you know, th that's another way of, of getting the word out on a new release is newsletter swaps, whether, <laughs> um, Joe, I sent you the link. <gasps> oh, oh. <laughs> somebody's in trouble. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we got a Regine and a Rebecca. <laughs> you have it. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. We got a full house tonight. Yeah. All right. So, all so far, how many free items do we have? Let's see if we can keep our tally here. Google Forms, Google Facebook Forms. Groups. Yep. GIMP. GIMP. Canva. Um, Canva. We, when you get into newsletter services, it depends on how many um, subscribers you have, but most of them are free for a certain amount below. Yeah. Uh, but newsletter swaps are another free. Um, Utility, mm -hmm. it, get the words out. I haven't done that yet. Oh. <laughs> it, it takes a little bit more legwork. And um, you do have to remember that 
you know, you're submitting your book to be swapped with their book. So yes. it's best to find people who will fit with your genre because you don't want exactly. to just swap with everybody. And then you send your newsletter out and people are getting books that they may not like. Right. Right. Exactly. I tried, I try to limit it to paranormal romance. If that's what I'm, you know, peddling <laughs> <laughs> urban fantasy, urban fantasy can cross over into that. Those two um, are, are, you know, buddies there. <laughs> um, but if I'm doing a horror, I wouldn't target those other people, you know, or a thriller, you know, you'd have to look for the horror people and the thriller people, you know, um, Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Book Bub, yep. Yeah. If they are following no, on Book not, Bub, they get a release. It's not through the email. <laughs> it wasn't through the email. It was through the instant messenger, Joe. Uh oh. <laughs> um, so you have to look at your IM again. <laughs> uh, along with Trisha's comment about Book Bub, if they follow you on Amazon too, they will also yes. get a notice when you release a new book. So if exactly. they go to your Amazon author page and click that follow button, anytime mm -hmm. you release a new book, they will automatically get notified. Yep. So BookBub, Amazon, you know, the Amazon page, Goodreads, good or bad. <laughs> if you have your book on Goodreads, I mean, that is, that is a true reader platform. Uh, yeah. I know that it, 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 it's, there's good, bad, and ugly in there. <laughs> well, it, it's not just that it's a little bit choppy waters in there. It's also difficult to navigate. It's not comfortable to navigate that site. And that's the biggest right. problem. Right. It, 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 it's not user-friendly. Yeah. And, and when something's not user-friendly and you have limited amount of time, because remember, you're writing books, you're marketing mm -hmm. the books, and you have a day job, and you mm -hmm. have a life, mm -hmm. you can only devote so much time to learning new platforms. And if you're already devoting so much of that time elsewhere, it's like, all right. Yeah, it's like learning TikTok. Something's got to go. Oh, God. <laughs> I still, I still can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, I, I, I downloaded a uh, movie maker this week. Oh, you know, because, because, yeah, I was just like, oh, you know, I played with the thing I have online and did two of them, and they were like, but I can't control the transitions. I had, you know, it's just zoom out or or zoom to the side, but it doesn't. There's no fade out or anything like that. And, I'm like, oh, let's see what they have. So I found a free movie maker through here. I, I could go premium and probably get more, but I did a you know a two and a half minute fractured fairy tales thing that was kind of fun. It it you know it's amateurish. <laughs> I know that, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, let's let's do this with photos and things like that. So are you having fun though? Yes, I was okay. having fun with it. Okay. I was completely you know procrastinating from writing <laughs> so, uh, okay. um, for promo pictures pixabay you can oh. use that uh, that has free photos okay. for like the backdrops and things like that so that's a good one um i don't know if there are any you know any issues with pixabay i've never i've never heard it but i've never used it oh. for cover art but I've used it for like, you know, background, like this wood background that we have around us, they have one just like that. Okay. So it's, it's almost, you know, in the public space. Oh, author. I've heard of that one before. I haven't heard of that one. <clears throat> now, Goodreads giveaways are iffy. Yeah. I've, I've heard both good and bad on those. I know in the past, they have been wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I just and they, wonder and if they, they were still have... free in the past. I don't know if they're still free. Even when they were, I think it was the fifty dollars to do the eBooks through mm -hmm. um, Amazon, and they did the delivery. Mm -hmm. That was still worth it. But okay. that was, I want to say, it was like three years ago that I did one of those, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm not up on whether or not they're still as good as they used to be because I know once something gets really popular, then it tends to backtrack. Right. Oh, uh, Joe said, be careful. IG is flagging some of those now. Yeah, I, I mean, I when I upload to stuff to TikTok, when I upload videos and stuff like that, I will have them do their check, their copyright check, just to make sure. So, oh, nope, you have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. 200 for a giveaway? No, no. Ooh, too rich no. for my blood. That's, that's, yeah, that's too much. Yeah, that's at fifty, I was I was okay. And, yeah, 
remember you know we've talked about this plenty of times remember the budget how -hmm. much did it cost for your editing how much did it cost for your cover art how much did it cost Mm -hmm. for you to format it did you format it yourself Mm -hmm. how much did it cost you to get it uploaded to like ingram 49 dollars there because they Mm -hmm. seem to have gotten rid of all the coupons so Mm -hmm. your costs have already added up the marketing I don't, budget. I don't use Ingram, so I don't have that cost, but I have some of the others. <laughs> I, I still have some of my books straight yeah. through Ingram. Yeah. But the, the thing is, it's still going to cost money to publish the book. So how much of your marketing budget do you have after spending however much you spent to put the book together in the first place? Right. We, we've really got to find those cost effective items that work because otherwise what I see happening is a lot of authors going broke chasing <laughs> different trends to try and right. hit the top of the charts. And, and there's a lot of, of advice floating around. I'm not going to call it bad advice because you do have to spend money to make money, but right. you have to spend wisely. Yes. And that's yes. the kicker. You have to figure out what is the right choice for you and your book and what works for one author may mm-hmm. not work for you. It could be a genre thing. It could be a platform thing. You know, you, you've got to factor in, you know, what you're able to do, what you're able to afford, Right. time you're able to invest. I mean, that all factors into how profitable or break even your book's going to be. Yeah. Time and effort, you know, and money, time, effort, and money are the things, you know, I don't have a lot of time because I work full time. So I have to be very judicial with my, you know, <laughs> my <weight> tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do know somebody, um, <laughs> um, you know, Oh, that's great. Cool. Hey, okay. There's yeah. another free resource. We're gonna have to to put these links in the uh, the show notes at the end yeah. of the show. I'll have to tally yeah. them all up and and get them in there because this is some really good advice. And I think it'll yeah. it'll definitely be good going forward, especially for us that are gonna test it out. Um, yeah. Like all author, I've heard of it. I don't think I belong to that one, so I would love to try that one out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just you know. Um, oh, Facebook ads are a single. I I won't do Facebook ads. Ads. I just have issues with that. You know, I've seen too many, too many authors get their accounts hacked and their bank accounts hacked. Yes, they get it back through PayPal, but it's a nightmare. And I'm like, mm, I'm not, I'm not connecting anything there. What just I've because noticed because of the the hackability of this platform, you right. know. <laughs> What I've noticed with like Facebook ads versus Amazon ads, and, and mm-hmm. it it's constantly fluctuating, mm-hmm. but with Amazon ads, you give them a hard budget, you may it's or may good. not spend that yes. budget. Right. If you give Facebook a budget, it goes, oh, I have this much to spend today. <laughs> yep. Exactly. It, they, I, they treat it so mm-hmm. differently. And Amazon is based on clicks. Facebook, I think, is based on impressions, if I am not. Well, you can do impressions too with Amazon, but I think it, the, the CTR is is the, it's the standard one you use with Amazon. Right. right. What is right. publish? Publish. So, it sounds cute. I, like I want to know that. what this publish. is. <laughs> Oops, Sorry. that sounds horrifying. I'm assuming that's in referring to uh, the the budgeting, not publish. <laughs> yes, yes. In a candy store. Yes, that is Facebook in a nutshell. Yes. I have money. I'm gonna spend it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It, it it would be good if it was being spent and actually, you know, transforming into buys or or at least you know to your Amazon page. But you don't know. Now the downside of Amazon too is you let's see got that budget the first day or the first month of your ad it really does want to spend the money and it wants to get out there after that like the next month you can't seem to replicate the same sales Mm -hmm. the next month Mm -hmm. it's like you have Mm -hmm. to constantly continue rebooting ads or or creating new ads for it to work anything that's that's got longevity that you would like to be able to actually test over a long period of time it's an after the first month, it tends to die. Yeah. Well, yes, yes, yeah, true, true. Um, you can also do ads on BookBub. BookBub ads, BookBub readers are more the, the bargain and the free readers because they're used to that. So doing full price book 
ads on theirs is tough to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading these. I'm trying to speak, and it's not. It's not. <laughs> I just keep hearing Ross's voice in the back of my oh, mind when I see that. <laughs> For our audio listeners, we, we've got Margaret saying, pivot, pivot. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Only do ads 30 yeah. days at a time. True. But then again, we're back into that time constraint thing. Like yeah. if an ad's working, I don't want to reboot it in 30 days because well, I'm going to take time. I think to she's saying you renew it. Well, yeah, you, you still, you still have date. to go through you and you have date. to. Yeah, I do that. Oh, no? I do that at the end of every month. Is like I don't think the changing date. the dates works, does it? It's like see, you have to like stop know. it and start up a brand new like copy yeah, ad. It doesn't, it doesn't start and stop, you know, start mm -hmm. and stop or stop and start. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, Recycling after six. I think six months wouldn't, would, would be too long. But yeah. again, it, it's, again, it's subjective too, because every book seems to do a little bit different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and it's funny with the Amazon ads. Some months, some of them are just down here, and then they bump up the next month. It's almost like even the ads are cyclical. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's saying, yes, you have to do redo yeah, the Yeah, and it's a ad. month at a time, and then you've got to basically copy the ad as a brand new ad, mm -hmm. which that becomes another, you know, tedious job with, yes, you're going to have to invest some time. Yes. Mm -hmm. what's going to end up getting the most bang for your buck. So right. if it's, if it's exactly. worth it to do that, then absolutely do that. Especially if you're able to keep your ad spend low enough so that you're remaining profitable. But if you're spending mm -hmm. tons of time babysitting ads, is it actually but, profitable now? Yeah. It's like, where's your time best suited for me? It's writing. Cause you know, I only have this amount of time, so I can't continually recycle ads, but, I add an ad now and then. I, I I was more active before, but now I'm just, you know, plinking one in now and then <laughs> and just renewing them for another month at the end of the month so they don't go away. <laughs> I, I go in spurts. I, I One of my clients, I babysit their ads. And uh, then for my own, whenever I happen to have a couple bucks to throw at a book, okay, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll try an ad for a month and see how it goes but I don't have a constant ad stream running. Yeah. Well, my ad stream right now is less than 20 bucks a month. So, cause I have hey, it very perfect. low. That's perfect. I have it very low. <laughs> now for, for keywords, now this isn't a free utility, but it is so worth yeah. the cost. KDP rocket has been one of my favorite tools to use. Yes. And it was, I think $99 when I bought it and yeah. it is uh, like lifetime upgrades. Yeah. Um, yep. it, really helps finding keywords, searching at different categories, uh, comparing books, finding, you know, what categories, other books that are similar to yours are in. So you can kind of recategorize yeah. things. Um, the ad keywords, also the just keywords you would type in if you're searching for the book. I mean, there's so many ways that you can use it. Yes. And I love the scoring system, how it, it tells you what the Google searches look like, what the Amazon yeah. searches look like, whether yeah. or not it's got a, a good ratio. So that one was worth the investment. I've had it yes. for probably four years now. Yeah, I just got KDP Rocket this this past year, 2021. Um, I've had KDP Spy. Uh, yeah, that was a good one too. Isn't that free? I I think it was. There's another one. R O K KDP ROI was the other one. I'm not no, sure which one was the free and which one was the the paid. KDS or KDSPY. So that's the one that, you know, I think that's the one that Brian has and is Brian Cohen has in his um, Amazon ads and it was free. So that okay. one was free. Okay. Um, uh, at the time, I don't know if it is now, <laughs> but I think I started doing the ads in 2020. <clears throat> so, or, or <laughs> yeah. Anybody know anybody who has made a business <laughs> of the keyword tools and making up ads for authors? I'm sure there's a ton out there. There are a lot. The problem are is, are they reputable? And then that you can only figure out if you talk to people who've worked with them. Right. 
um, because it's, yeah. Any marketing is going to be a gamble on some level. So yes. there, there is no guarantees. However, you can see what kind of ads it created. You can talk to any anybody who's worth dealing with is going to say, yeah, feel free to, to check out my reviews or talk to these authors that, that I've worked with. And, you know, that way you can get good feedback. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, there's a lot of, of services out there geared towards taking the burden off of authors, but it'll mm -hmm. cost you. Yeah. Yes. Instant <laughs> data scraper. Ooh. Oh, yeah. see, I'm learning some new stuff here. Yep. I love it. Yep. Yeah. The, the, that doesn't the, sound sketchy at all. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that I did one, hear Brian mention that one. I was going to say that was one of the other tools. Yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> did I say his name wrong? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, well, I mean. Themselves. Yeah. And, and again, there's the time factor. Right. Right. I mean, there are services out there and they're, they're quite costly because they're expecting you to have a big budget in order for it to make it worthwhile for them. Well, and just like any person out there, they want to be paid for their time. Yeah. And, and you got to think effort. of that when and this is, yeah, this is babysitting ads and, and tweaking them and making them the, the best uh, return for the money. And again, no. it's saving you that time. So yes. that's why it's going to cost something. But again, always check referrals. Always find out other mm -hmm. authors they've worked with. Find out if they were happy with the service. Yes. If there was any issues, if there was anything that they, you know, that either they loved or they hated. Because then, then you're getting a little bit better picture. Yeah, exactly. And again, marketing's a gamble. It's... Yeah, <laughs> there's no guarantees on it. You just got to keep plugging at it and figure out what works for you. And of course, you start off with a good cover, a really good hook. Make sure mm -hmm. that your blurb is, is spot on. Make sure that your story is well edited. Yes. You know, you, you got to start with the best of the best of what you can do. And then you go from there. Yeah. What is that? Shipping jobs overseas? Hold on. What, what did I leave off? Hold on. Let's see. We got... <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't want to do my taxes either <laughs> i don't like taxes yeah <laughs> amazon ads just let authors advertise book from other public what why i well i can see um i can see well if you're a publisher of something to be able to do that okay. outsourcing it, the the word you're looking for is outsourcing Margaret. outsourcing there you go. <laughs> even i was going wait what what Hold yeah. on. <laughs> those um, people live with the unicorns <laughs> yes <laughs> i want to live with the unicorns how do i yeah. find them there are a couple uh, there are a couple names that i that i th think i'm aware of that do it well but uh, you know, again, it's hit or miss, but again, you know, funding, I'd rather. <laughs> That's why I am. I only have one client that I agreed to babysit ads for. I will never do it again because it is, it is a job. It yeah. is a job. Yeah. yeah. And it exactly. does take time. And like I said, I don't even want to do my ads when I'm done. <laughs> Yep. It's like, ah, <laughs> even with the resources at your fingertips, you don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have enough time during the day yeah. to, to get stuff done. I I've managed to overload myself because I can't say no. Mm -hmm. And, um, things kept getting pushed back because I kept getting delayed. You know, we got the, everybody got sick in January that pushed us back two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, We've had a bunch of things going on with the kids. And so it's like, I have not had the time that I needed to, to devote to getting the work done on a good schedule. And yeah. it's eventually I, I will figure it out. But right now, and for like at least the next month and a half, I'm running on fumes and I'm trying to put out as many fires as I can and get everything done and get my taxes done. And <laughs> so keep a roof over my head after, you know, this whole season is done. 
Might have yeah, nice I, relaxing slow down. In, in, in today's thing, I put up a, a, a meme with different magical things. One of them was cloning. <laughs> I want to clone. Yes. <laughs> you know, if you could do one of these things, telekinesis, clone. I forget the others, but those are the two that I want. <laughs> Give me one of those. You Wait, know? What, what, if, what do you do when you're done with them, though? Well, it, it it only lasts for a, a finite period of time, and then and then in order you have to recharge for a amount of time, and then you can do it again. <laughs> I'm not seeing a downside here. I know, <laughs> unless unless of course the clone has the same propensity for procrastination as we do. Ah, oh, shit! <laughs> you had to go and say that, didn't you? Yeah, somebody somebody mentioned that in the, in the group thing, and I'm like, oh yeah. That wouldn't work. <laughs> Rebecca, I'm going to refer you to my associate over here, Jane, for an answer. Um, I'm next in line. <laughs> so get behind the short girl. <laughs> yeah, and you know, that's exactly how I do things, which is why I'm so behind right now. Yes. I don't have any more spare moments. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I, 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 Rebecca, I already have the covers for the co-author thing. I know, <laughs> they're so pretty. They're so pretty. <laughs> so. Yeah, so one of the things that, just to, to completely derail us, yeah. uh, one of the things that, that derailed me from work was these beauties right here. Oh, yes. Because I, I've mentioned it before, and I'll say it probably many more times between now and July. But I am heading up the Combat Con writer's track. And this year we are focusing on intensives, which means we are going to have four full days that uh, will equate to basically a writing conference, a um, Comic-Con, and a film festival. We're writing stories. We're getting the actors to act them. The filmmakers are going to film them. And at the end of it, we're going to have a really cool product that we can say we created ourselves. So we're going to be doing some intensive, uh, at least for the writer tracks, we're going to be doing some intensive um, deep dives into plot and structure. We're going to talk about script writing versus narrative. We're going to talk about um, characterization, how to translate our words to the actors and get them to understand them. We're actually going to be participating in the filming. I mean, it's, it's going to be a really fun weekend. Yeah. And if you make it through the intensive, Whichever one you sign up for, you will get these wonderful, adorable badges. <laughs> so go. Yes. It's going to be fun. It's so much fun. Combat Con is one of my favorites. So for those of you who don't know, Combat Con is July 21st through 24th. It is in Las Vegas at the Flamingo Hotel. If you want to find out more information, go to CombatCon.com. Really going to be fun. I am so excited. Yes. Every time I get into a meeting with these guys, I'm like, oh, this is sounding so cool. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah I, I because i have to volunteer for things because i can't yes. say no they're like how how can we how can we create things that are, are going to be incentives for these these different tracks that we're on i'm like well people like you know trophies and awards and recognitions but we don't want to just give them a piece of paper we right. should give them badges they're like great make them <laughs> <laughs> sure i could do that <laughs> you did a good job <laughs> that was again another thing that that sidetracked you <laughs> and it was it because it's a fun sidetrack it was like mm -hmm. writing badges <laughs> pretty badges. Pictures. pretty pictures it's like me making those videos pretty pictures and music <laughs> <laughs> And this so, one yeah. kills me though. Like th this one was my absolute favorite. If you look at the uh, the storyteller one, because they yeah. told me tongue in cheek, self deprecating humor, and keep it on theme. So I went, <laughs> okay, okay. And I I found a kind of build a night puzzle piece. Okay. Um, different vector set that I could use. Yep. And then I found the filmmaker set. I was like, oh my God, I have to do this. So I get the little quirk in the helmet. Like he's yeah. twisting his head just to the side. He's looking like he's about to hit you with that, that, that camera. Yeah. I, that one cracks me up so much. It's a weapon. No, it's a camera. It's a weapon. No, it's a camera. <laughs> okay. I had way All too right. much fun making that. <laughs> uh, Wait, what is it? 
I bet you could get Jay to embroider. I haven't talked to Jay in forever. I hope he's doing good. He kind of yeah, dropped like off the face of. Is he doing the Twitter thing too? Like you don't see. I I don't see anything but the, the same ten posts on Facebook. So I've pretty much given up on Facebook. Yeah, I, when I want to see who who I want to see their posts, I actually search for them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, the scribe is like stabbing himself in the eye with a fountain pen. Yes. <laughs> that, that's intriguing. That's how you feel at the end of the day. Coming out of it. I should do some ink spots in the behind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's on Instagram. That's why I don't see him. Yeah. I, I try to, to make the rounds, but Instagram is the similar to Facebook, it's the, the least interesting one for me to go to. Right. Yes. Yeah. He's holding it backwards. Yeah. He's going to stab himself in the eye. Yes. <laughs> that was the idea as she was making it probably. <laughs> yes. Yes. I actually still have to do a little bit more work on that one. I need to, uh, to get the outlines a little bit cleaner. Crisper. Yeah. Because they, they got to yes. be perfect. Yes. But yeah, so yeah. I I keep getting derailed by things and then then I get pushed further and further back. So time, time's important. Back on yes. track. Yep. <laughs> time, effort. <laughs> like today, I wanted to get writing done. Didn't happen because I was scheduling all those posts and I had, mm -hmm. you know, what? I don't know how, I, I have to do math now. <laughs> Hold on. Hold. Hold, please. <laughs> While you're so thinking for, of that. For all the half hour slots, I had people in. So I had all those banners of welcome that I had to schedule for each of the half hour slots. So that that takes time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that that, you know, and then and then I'm like, oh, I can post I can schedule all my posts, too, because I have two two things within there, one at the beginning and one at the end. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Let's do that. So I'm writing the posts and, and putting them up and scheduling them in my little five minute slots. <laughs> so now you know, do that, you get a lot of interaction from those? Yes. So I'll have to be in and out. But a, a majority of it is during my work day. I didn't take the day off. Yes, you need new rails. <laughs> rails? You went off the rails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little sharper than I was last week on Friday. <laughs> I, okay. I met I met this I, at the fondue thing that my kids had, and I'm looking on the phone and I'm trying to find spilling ink. Now, my mind thought it was Saturday because we went down there Thursday night, so I'm a day behind. I'm all messed up, and I took Friday off, so you know that's normally my Saturday. And I sent her a message. I said, "Are you on tonight?" And she says. No, <laughs> the show is tomorrow. Of course, I've had three drinks, so I'm, I'm relatively happy. <laughs> and then I sent her the, the the picture of half my head and the, the table behind me. <laughs> so that kind of showed. I, I could have sworn you were messing with me. No, yeah, you, it was like she's messing with me. Whatever. I, right. I have only had one drink when we've ever when we were doing drinking. And, and really you know, drinking with authors yeah i only had one drink during that okay yes <laughs> because if i had more than one i would get to the way I was I had as long as you had fun it was okay strawberry then. margarita and i had something else i don't remember what the third thing was as long as you had fun you you yes, earned some, some adult fun out and i had fondue <laughs> And fondue. Yes. And fondue. Yes. All right. We, we got a serious question here. Okay. Margaret says, do you have time to chat about common wisdom in promoting a series? Curious, what is the best practice for promoting Markdown first book, Markdown all, Markdown first free or first free? I always um, go with the, uh, you promote the first book and let the rest be what they are. Yeah, exactly. Um, and for a new, well, when you're releasing the second or the third or the fourth or whatever, um, occasionally I will do a sale on the first to try to bump that. Mm -hmm. um, but as you say, 
yes, you're promoting the, the current book, but you want them to start at the beginning. Yeah. And if it's backlist, just promote the first book. Yeah. Because that's where exactly. readers are going to start is that first book. Right. That's what I do. I mean, I have what, 13, 14 series that I, that I just promote the first book. And I've started to promote the box sets, first book and box sets, just because okay. they, they appeal to different audiences. That's true. That's you know, true. If the box set's there and they know it's a complete series, they'll go for that versus the first book. Now, when you're looking at a no buy through, Yes. Where are they stopping down the chain? Is it they're just getting the sale book and they're not picking up the next one? If that be the case, then I wouldn't worry about putting sales on the first one. I would just be promoting the first one. Yes. If you're getting them to stop at like a second or a third book, then it's time to look at the second or the third book and see, is there something in that, that between space that you can tweak to make more attractive? Is there something with the blurb? Is there uh, the branding off between the covers? Are they not realizing that the next book in the series belongs with this one? Are, Usually that you don't first, get the follow yeah. through on the middle of the series. Are you ending the first book on a hook, not cliffhanger, but a hook that makes them want to get the second one? And after you're at the end, do you say continue the series with with X, Y, Z. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to make it before April 1st. It, if the books are already published, it's just a matter of formatting. Right. You know, exactly. you've got to, you've got to get your cover art situated, but it's the formatting that you should be able to. What, yes. Do a, weekend Rebecca, do, a, do a separate box set to sell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every if you have more of, than, yeah. Every series of mine has the, has the ebook box set. Yes. And I've started to do um, some of the hardcover special editions for the box sets. Yep. Anita makes a very, very good point here. Your back matter needs to make sure to tell everyone the other books in your series. So sometimes yes. that means you go back in. Mm -hmm. If you've got six books in a series, you still have to, to upload one, two, three, four, and five with all the current information for your entire series because mm -hmm. readers need it every time. Yep. If they miss it in one book, they will go, I didn't know it was there. I didn't know right. there was another book. Right. Every time. Yeah. And I usually, after I write the end, I do like the, the triple dots and then go down or triple stars and then go underneath it and say, you know, if I have, you know, an excerpt or, or the blurb for the next book, I, I say, you know, you know, the next book in the series is da da da. da you know, continue on to read more or, or things like that just to pull them forward. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a good absolute. And that's a free way of doing it. <laughs> One more tally on the free side. Yes. Yes. You know, you might sure have to check matters book up to date before the drop off is good. Sad fact. Oh yeah. I mean, always look at, at the quality, always look at the reviews and see what, mm -hmm. you know, how the book is being, um perceived by by the readers but a lot of times it is it's that missing information they don't realize another book yeah. is there the branding doesn't match so they don't see them as the same because they really do need everything in line right we're very visual creatures and if we see all of the same pretty colors or all the same pretty designs we're like okay those belong together um and also the back mm -hmm. matter tell them specifically at the back of the book yes the next book is this Yes. It's part of a yep. series. Exactly. Make it easy on your readers. Assume nothing when it comes to the readers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I, I've thinned down my back matter a little bit. I used to have every single book, but when you have 61 books, you can't do that. <laughs> and, and no, updating does not change the edition. No. no. Nope. Um, I've, um, you know, for the for the fractured fairy tales, I'm going to be doing a special edition with all ten of them when I'm done, and that's a hard copy edition only. I'm not doing all ten in an ebook with the special binding and all that. I think so. I think so. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I'm going to try. You know, I I've got to see what I can <laughs> finagle. <laughs> so. You know, I, I I would love to have some some you know somebody like you know bookish box set or 
whatever, do the special editions where they have the gold inlay and all of that. Mm. But, you know, or the foil inlays. I would love gold inlay, but hey. <laughs> I, think we all I knew like, what you meant. I knew what you yes. meant. Oh, <laughs> um, so pretty. So, so, you know, that's my goal for that set because it's such a, a fun set. Yes. <laughs> You're a resident uh, fictional murderer. I didn't kill puppies. Ooh, mithril inlay. Ooh, I like it. Ooh. Gotta love those Ooh. Lord of the Rings those, those, yeah. uh, references there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I've got my old co cover artist contracted for that for next year. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she did most of the books. So she, need, you know, and I told her what I was thinking of. And she's noodling on it as well. I said, I want it to be very special. <laughs> now, here's a question for you. I don't think we've covered yet today. Mm -hmm. um, you're arranging <laughs> the Facebook parties, but yes. are you working with a publicist to help you with other stuff? Or are you doing this release 100% you? Um, I have a uh, another Facebook takeover on the publicists group. Uh, but... And, the, and they've been helping a little with getting the people into my group. So um, not quite happy okay. <laughs> yet with, with the results of that. But, you know, I'm told things are coming, things are coming, but I haven't seen them. Okay. So, so I took the, the reins and said, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I need to do. You know, I was supposed to get a, a Facebook banner for the page. I did it mm. or for the group. I did it <laughs> because God only knows when I would get it. So, yeah, <sighs> that's, that's, I'm, I'm waiting to see how things will pan out, but I'm not betting on that side of things. Yeah. And that, it's hard, you know, we said that marketing is a, a gamble, but yes. especially when it comes to publicists too, because yes. publicists don't guarantee sales, they guarantee exposure. Yes. And exposure doesn't guarantee sales. It just guarantees right. people see you. So yes. it's it's another level to that that gambling, which can be beneficial because yeah. the more people see you, the more chances they have of of finding and loving your books. Yes. But again, it's not a guarantee. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I've gotten a lot of exposure in that manner exposure. last year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> More last year. I haven't gotten anything new in a couple months. Not, you know, no new leads, nothing. So I've been finding my own. Is it a squeaky wheel thing? Like if you, you have to kind of seek Probably. them out? Mm. Probably. But, you know. There's that time thing again. I don't have time to babysit yeah. the publicist. Exactly. I don't have time to, you know, to, to say, you know, hey. <laughs> See, I need a babysitter. That's what I need. I need somebody yeah. to babysit me and yeah. go, please get off that. Go do your work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, I, and, and I'm, I would not recommend Okay. The person I went through. And again, that's why you that's talk to point. authors who have dealt with these people mm -hmm. because you're going to get the real answer from them. It was not specialized PR. It was blanket. Oh, yeah. We've worked with those guys before or a yep. person like that before who yes. just kind of throw shit at a wall, see what sticks. Yep. And some sticks for some authors, right. but not all. Right. Exactly. But you can't have a scattershot approach. You have to be targeted. Yep. So, so that's, you know, that was the, the downside of it. It was not, you know, tailored for me. So, you know, if the, but, but tailoring it for each of the clients would take a lot of work, mm -hmm. a lot of attention and a lot of focus. And, and that would be the only thing you're doing not have this other job and this other job and this other job and this other job. And, oh, by the way, here's this, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so, 
that's a learning experience as well. That sounds um, like there's a lot of learning experience going on. Mm -hmm. And and it's mm -hmm. interesting because I know we've talked about book launches in the past and just to see how, you know, the years have progressed, mm -hmm. what still remains the same and what has changed? Like Facebook parties coming back into vogue again. Mm -hmm. That's something that was yes. <clears throat> early teens mm -hmm. was kind of the big thing and then mm -hmm. kind of fell off the radar for a while. Well, I think some people still did them. Um, I think if you're in a box set, it's, um, critical. Yeah. You know, um, because, because a lot of the, a lot of the word of mouth is through the Facebook groups and it's not just, you know, your own Facebook group. It's, it's all the big ones like, you know, paranormal romance, um, urban fantasy groups. So those are the groups that you can, you know, find the contacts and say, Hey, do you do takeovers? You know, and, and in some cases, um, when you're in a box set and th these are the things that you take away from being in a box set is making those contacts and saying, Hey, can I come on your page? And they're doing it for the, for the box set. So you have, you know, 20 to 30 authors and they're like, yeah, <laughs> um, you know, with, with all of their own followings mm -hmm. that they're bringing into the group. So it's a, it's a, but as a single author, if you don't have a big following, it's harder because they're not seeing growth of their group through you doing a takeover. So it's, it's a, it's a business proposition. <laughs> Any way you do it, even news, newsletter swaps, as you had said, you know, yeah. If somebody has 100 people on their newsletter and somebody has 10,000, that's not exactly an equitable <laughs> trade. <laughs> but there are some that do it, you know, anyway, because they like the, you know, they like the newer people who are out there and want to bring them up with them. So now one person I do recommend, specifically if you're in the fantasy genre, would be CL Cannon. Yep. And every month on our, our indie news, she does mm -hmm. the uh, the marketing tips. And mm -hmm. I swear every month I'm learning new things from her. Mm -hmm. And last month she had, or actually it's this month. Yeah, it was, it was March's episode. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the website. So I actually need to go back to Go Indie Now and <laughs> rewatch the episode so that mm -hmm. I can get the website. But she sent you a website link to go to where you can actually search for blogs that are looking for books to review. Oh, cool. And you can search yeah. for ones that are indie friendly. You can search for ones that are looking for eBooks. And that is a really good, again, free Resource. tool. Resource. It's a source yeah. that you can use to try and get some reviews, possibly get, you know, a little bit of extra eyes on your book. Mm -hmm. So definitely take a look at what CL Cannon has to offer and listen at least to her, her marketing tips. Yeah, absolutely. She's always got something good to say and it's free to listen to those. Right. Right. The, the one thing that I think has fallen off the wayside, but at least for, from what I've seen is the blog tours. Blog tours were big when we were, when, you know, in the 2010s. Man, stuff. those were great in the beginning. But those, but those are like Facebook parties now. So it's sort of like, you know, is it going to transition back to blog parties? <laughs> See, now it's, it's not so much blogs anymore. Yeah. People, people still write blogs. Yes. And certain blogs do still get a good following, but the blog tours aren't as, as popular. Right. The getting the mentioned the on TikTok, though, yes, that's where everybody's going after now. They're trying to get people to talk about their books on TikTok and be right. part of the whatever hashtags. Exactly. So it, it's everything kind of moves in, in cycles. I wonder at one point, at what point it comes back towards blogs because of, I, I see, what is it? Medium. Medium's becoming right. really popular. And from what I see, it's kind of like having a blog. Yes. And exactly. A YouTube channel, all of this, you know, yeah. Twitch. <laughs> it's just, you know? it's a written medium instead of, you know, visual. Right. So we're right. going backwards now into the blog territory again, mm -hmm. so to speak. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> uh, so now uh, Anita says, hold on. I want to catch this. Yes. <clears throat> she says newsletter swap numbers matter less than opens and clicks. Yes. Your open mm -hmm. ratio is right. very important because if you've got a million subscribers mm -hmm. and one opens it, 
that's not doing anybody any good. Right. If you have a thousand exactly. subscribers and 999 of them open it, there you go. Right. So, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Very, very important. An active newsletter readership. And that's something you have to cultivate. That's, again, that's time. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned before about the limits of when you mm -hmm. get to certain subscribers, you need to be right. actively calling the list. If somebody is not opening and clicking, right, get them out. You know, yep. Grace period, exactly. and then they're gone because yes. you're not going to pay for dead weight. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Book bog has been crickets for, yeah. And I, I've yeah. seen the same thing with mine. I've, I've all but given up on mine. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember sometimes <laughs> to post on my blog, but my blog also posts onto um, Amazon. Mm. So, and to my um, website. True. So I'm like, yeah. okay, you know, the last, my, I think I was on the third book on the Dragon Trilogy. And I'm like, oh, I haven't posted anything on my blog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Patreon. That's right. We hadn't even talked about Patreon. Yeah. Because now we're, we're cultivating our readers with actually, you know, putting their money where their mouth is. Right. Oh, that's a good, that's a neat thing. I haven't, I haven't played with Patreon yet, so. I have not had the energy to delve into it as much as I should. I've started one and I think my page is inactive right now. Mm -hmm. I just didn't like, I, my problem is continuing to have that regular content. Mm -hmm. Right. Any regular yeah. content. Without anywhere. giving everything <laughs> away for free. Of, outside of releasing books for me. It's like, it's like, okay, I start it and you know, it's fun for a little bit, but when it stops being fun, it's like, <laughs> mm -hmm. Kofi, that's about the same thing isn't it it's it's uh yeah um i don't know if it's the same as patreon or if it's just like tips okay i'm not sure anita can you clarify that one for us <laughs> repurpose <laughs> it <Yes>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm gonna, it's stuck in my head now all night thanks that's margaret okay. That's okay. I, I, in my day job, I, I like somebody said chart. pivot and I posted the, the scene of, of doing the couch. It's a meme. <laughs> so, so now, you know, that meme gives up a lot in that meeting. <laughs> okay. Similar, but a bit more flexible. Okay. We'll have to, we'll have to check it out. Oh, it's like a tip jar. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, I will I will compile the list of all the links that we've talked about tonight and put those in the show notes. It will not be the 10 minutes I normally update because no. <laughs> it's going to take me a little bit to go through all that stuff. There's but I will make sure by tomorrow morning all the notes are in there so that uh, it becomes a resource if you guys want to come back and look at it. But like I said, definitely check out Go Indie Now. Look for CL Cannon's marketing tip. Yes. She does it on the Indie News show. Um, I think there's another show she also does it for. But every month has been uh, eye-opening, has been wonderful information. And we've been in the business since, what, 20, 2009? Yeah, 2010 was my first published book, so yeah. And still learning new stuff. And, yeah, and she absolutely. amazes me with the stuff that she comes up with. So definitely good advice, and it's free to listen. So mm -hmm. no harm, no foul there. Right. And All right. We are already going by. I know. I know. We blew <laughs> through that hour tonight. My yes. goodness. What's a good topic though. It's, yes. it's a really good topic. Yes. And, and, and in a couple of weeks, we'll know how I did. <laughs> we'll know whether it was better than February and January or not. <laughs> All right. I like what Regine said because yes. um, that's kind of how I would update is <laughs> semi-monthly. It's like, yeah. oh crap, I haven't written something in a while. <laughs> yep. Well, if the content but, is excellent, that's that's true. But if it's yeah, if it's worth it, yeah. then you do keep your you retain yeah. your people. Yeah. All right. So, like I said, guys, by tomorrow, I will guarantee the notes will be up. It will not be the 10 minutes normally. Uh, but thank you guys for hanging out with us. Love the comments today. You guys were awesome. Jane, great information today. This Thank was a, a really good show, and we'll we'll be sure to make sure the notes reflect that at the end. Mm -hmm. Are we back next week, Jane? Yes, we have, I believe, Tahani. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So then we will see you guys next week. Everybody stay safe. Take care. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>